Yes. You know, a big lie we're told is, you know, the good war is World War II, right? But mm -hmm. really, uh, there's a lot of evidence that he shows, including, you know, that in the beginning when uh, it started coming to international knowledge of what Hitler was doing to the Jews, the United States initially wasn't allowing Jewish people to come to the United States to escape Hitler. And so um, it was that. And then just, you know, the segregation when they sent black soldiers over to fight, they would still send them on segregated ships and things like that. And then, you know, obviously what we did to Japan and nuking whole cities full of civilians and firebombing whole cities full of civilians, uh, just massive massacres. And, and you know, the, the nuclear bombings that we did, I would argue, is the worst terrorist attack in world history. And, and um, you know, and that there was a majority of the generals, the top generals and Amer uh, American generals and admirals, four star, five star generals, um, the majority of them, I, I want to say it's six out of seven, said that the the nuclear bombings were militarily unnecessary or immoral, just uh, that th they didn't need to happen. Japan was already ready to surrender. And it was really ultimately a, a message to the Soviet Union. So it was essentially, we're going to bomb these cities to send a message to the Soviet Union. It had mm -hmm. nothing to do with defeating Japan. So, I mean, it makes 9-11 almost look like child's play and, uh, to nuke two, two entire cities with nuclear bombs. And they're the only nation that's ever done that. And civilians, too, with that. Oh, I mean, that's yeah. my friend Sakuru is from. He's from there. Yeah. And he's one of my friends with the Red Berets. He currently lives in California. Yeah. And he's a nuclear activist. And he's been still talking about Fukushima because yeah. they're planning on releasing some of the water right. from the Fukushima plants into the ocean. Yeah. And so, yeah. I've been an anti-nuclear weapons activist too, even before, you know, this Ukraine war, I'm, I'm protesting about against the threat of nuclear war with mm -hmm. Russia and, and now China. Um, we're escalating towards war with China. But uh, maybe right before that, one of the last campaigns I did was uh, about nuclear weapons with actually the University of Arkansas is engaged in here in Fayetteville is engaged in helping to build nuclear weapons with the Honeywell Corporation. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually the, uh, I think it's the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize winner was ICANN, the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. And they uh, issued a report that you can find online. It's called Schools of Mass Destruction. And there's 50 American universities that are involved in helping to build and research uh, new nuclear weapons. And the University of Arkansas is one of 50. So I started a campaign to uh, oppose the university's involvement in the nuclear weapons complex. Um, yeah. And we, we, we started building uh, this new generation of nuclear weapons under Obama, and then Trump escalated. It's continuing under Biden. Um, mm -hmm. Started it about we're going to invest a trillion dollars in building new nuclear weapons. Trump bumped it up to 1.6 trillion. I can't remember the status under Biden. I'm sure it's not gone down. Uh, but they're, they're violating international law by doing this because we've signed a nuclear nonproliferation treaty that says that we're not supposed to we're supposed to disarm in good faith. That's the, the term in the, in the treaty that we signed and ratified. And, yeah. and so they can try to say, well, we're, we're just replacing our nuclear weapons, even though they're modernizing them and with new equipment, but they're also building at least one entirely new type of nuclear weapon. And so that is absolutely a direct violation of a treaty that we are signed and ratified. So, um, uh, but, you know, our government doesn't mind breaking international law. We just don't like it when other people do it. You know, they, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, One of the college students reached out to me. She was doing a paper on that at the time when you guys were doing the protest. And she was asking me about my thoughts on it. And, you know, I told her my thoughts. I said, but you know, who would be since we have such a high population of Marshallese in the area? Yeah. I would go to the Marshallese community yeah. leaders and get their statements. We, we worked with them some on our campaign. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, we had a, we did a freedom of information act request to get their contract. So they signed them something called a master collaboration agreement where they um, entered into a contract with the Honeywell corporation, which helps to, it does a massive part of the nuclear weapons construction in the United States. And their big facility is in Kansas city. So, University of Arkansas is working with Honeywell in Kansas City and, you know, having students work on these projects and some of the professors here work on these projects, uh, solving engineering. It's an engineering college, solving engineering problems and that Honeywell wants solved. And um, 
And so we we worked we had uh, this FOIA that we learned more information about what the contract entailed, and then we held a press conference in front of City Hall, and we had uh, Marshallese come speak, Marshallese uh, uh, citizens, and uh, you know speak about all the you know how their islands were uh, destroyed by our nuclear testing. We dropped uh, I want to say at least 60 nuclear bombs, it may be more than that. Uh, we dropped a bunch of nuclear bombs on the those islands. We often hear about J Japan, you know Hiroshima, Nagasaki, but we dropped at least 60 mm -hmm. nuclear bombs on, on the Marshall Islands. So we, we also nuked these people. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. We have the largest population here in Springdale. So. Yeah. I think, I think ours is second to Oregon. Oh, okay. I thought we were. Cause one. I know there's a large population of them in Oregon as well. Okay. But yeah, so. we kind of, we caught, started, we did some protests and we, uh, you know, we had events on campus and we had this press conference in front of city hall and then actually one of our city councilmen, Matt Petty, said he was going to sponsor. I, I drafted a resolution based on other cities that have passed resolutions about nuclear weapons and and uh, wrote a really good resolution. And, and Matt Petty, our councilman, said he was going to sponsor and introduce it. And then a couple of weeks later, he resigned from office. Yeah, you know, I'm sure it's unrelated, but um, it was kind of a... Um, uh, kind of took the wind out of the sails, so to speak, or something. I haven't really got back on that. So I've kind of just shifted gears on in terms of uh, activism with uh, this Ukraine war and the threat of yeah. nuclear war. That's kind of my main focus. Um, we held a protest right during the, and it, I don't want to say the Russian, you know, the beginning of the Russian in war or something like that, because this war is, is nine years old. It didn't start a year ago. It started with the 2014 coup. The US it's just coup. when we recognized that it started because we right. don't and recognize the coup. Right. And, and, you know, you could say, well, this is an escalation Currently. by Russia. And, but, you know, it wasn't, this is certainly wasn't the beginning of the conflict or the war. And, um, and, and anyway, we held a protest right last year at the beginning of this escalation. And then we just had one last weekend, but now we've agreed to hold uh, monthly protests. Some people will ask for weekly protests and we did hold like three months of weekly protests when there was a threat of war with Iran. But in terms of, uh, fatigue and stuff like that. I'm thinking a monthly protest for now will be more sustainable. Um, yeah. So we're going to hold monthly protests the last Saturday of every month here in Fayetteville uh, to say no to nuclear war, not just with Russia, but also to China, because, you know, Russia is really, like I said, is the mini boss, but China's the final boss. China's the, the real, you know, there's even a little bit of dissent among Republicans. Some Republicans don't want a uh, war with Russia, but pretty much all of them want war want with China. War China. Yeah. Democrats and Republicans agree that we need war with China. And that's because China's economy is, is becoming so powerful that, uh, you know, the, the United States leaders are don't want to not be number one. You know, they, they always see things in terms of competition instead of cooperation. Hey, maybe we can cooperate with China and work together. Why do we have to compete? You know, right. and China's doing so much good in the world. Right. Because when you look at all the places they're going in, they're helping them build themselves up, develop themselves, the Belt and Roads Initiative. There's so much good they're doing. They lifted people out of poverty in their country. They've got the health care, the housing. housing. Yeah, they're, they're putting us to shame with the high speed rail for sure. I mean, they're number one in the world with high speed mm -hmm. rail. We, we always say America's number one. We're number one. But no, <laughs> definitely not on high speed rail. We're uh, mostly just number one at, at war and prisons. And exactly. Like, oh, shit, old country, right? That's what we were saying last night. Yeah. 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 yeah, we are. <laughs> it, there was another train derailment in Ohio last right. night. Yeah. Um, they did have a hazmat crew show up, but they said that nothing was leaked or expelled. Right. To our knowledge. But that's our knowledge that could be come out later that there was. Right. And it's the same company. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Norfolk I mean, Southern. Yeah. We're investing everything in, in war and military and bombs and, and not infrastructure. It's, it's yeah. pretty backwards. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we're also trying to point out to people. You know, we do follow a lot of MMT but yeah. when you've got more going out overseas or to the weapons manufacturers than what they've got coming in, even under MMT, there's a risk of inflation. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, the big risk with inflation, too, I think, is what we're seeing is that, uh, you know, when the United States, uh, after this escalation with Russia last year, um, the United States uh, led massive sanctions against Russia, trying to destroy their economy with the mm -hmm. intention that, you know, they would create enough pain and dissent in Russia that the, the 